Welcome back. Now, the harsh macroeconomic environment in Nigeria has adversely affected the performance of small business enterprises and it's hostile to their survival and growth. Majority of small business enterprises are grappling with the problem of uncertainty created by macroeconomic instability, policy shifts and current global pandemic. Now, how is your business faring? What is the ripple effect on employment and the economy? Adasa Kwe is an entrepreneur and angel investor she is the founder of newly juice newly lounge and the interim ceo of Hung world hunger fighters now remember you can join the conversation twitter us at plus tv africa or at way show africa one with the hashtag ways or you send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 8038463 thank you so much for joining us ada she's joining us via skype are you there <coughs> It's a pleasure to be here, Ua. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, we'll go quickly into the conversation. We saw a video of you on social media ranting <laughs> about how the banks are not um, encouraging small businesses, especially businesses that are currently, you know, um, shut down and they have uh, um, overheads and loans to service. So generally, I would like to ask first, how is your business doing and how have you been um, managing this global pandemic in your business um, space? Yeah, um, it's been very tough. Ua. Thanks for, for bringing me on to have a conversation about this. Indeed, I was ranting um, sometime last week regarding the fact that even though um, interventions were being um, taking were taking place across Nigeria um, with the government supporting the public health space we needed to we need to do a lot to contain this pandemic but the flip side of the coin is the economy and the drivers of the economy in my views majority the SMEs as you said at the start of your show we account for 84 percent of the workforce in Nigeria over 50 percent of the GDP according to a recent um, PricewaterhouseCoopers um, survey so I just can't understand why not enough focus or priority is given to the small and medium enterprises. My business were food and food service, and so were, account, were, were essentially an essential business, according to the government's classification. So we're able to reopen one of our stores. We have 10 stores. We've only been able to operate from one location this week, and over the last three days, we've been doing deliveries. But of course, we've lost over 98% of our typical revenue, and I really don't know how we're going to cope. And that's me that I'm supposedly an essential business. Talk less of those who are sitting at home, folding their hands and just praying right now. So it's a tough time. Okay, Ada, what do you, what would you rather the government do to at least mitigate um, this kind of negative impact yes. on the business? What would you rather the banks okay. rather, and the government? I know I, I, I went in on the banks. <laughs> um, they're an easy target, one would say, because they're the closest contact to us. We have to, they, they in, um, interact with us and all the money that the government gives typically passes through the, the banks. And I do feel that they just came out of a, a really big, good season of fantastic results, um, paying bonuses, I'm sure, to their executives and and um, and and all sorts and dividends. So I, I just want wanted to call out the fact that it's a trying time for everybody. Even banks would potentially have to maybe lay off some work. We all need to kind of give a little and be be empathetic to the the, the trials of of the broader community. And that's really why I went in on the bank. So what should the government be doing? Ministry of Finance, um, central central bank more stimulus needs to be pumped in. The Central Bank of Nigeria um, announced that they will be giving a 50 billion Naira loan, um, intervention loan for SMEs, a COVID relief fund, as they said. And I really, you know, 50 billion, that's really about $135 million. You know, Ghana next door is much smaller country. Ghana is not even up to the size of Lagos State, and Ghana is doing 175 million. But let's even pause, 50 billion Naira. We have 73,000 SMEs in Nigeria. They say that um, over 11,000 of these, 11,800 or so, are in Lagos alone. Mm -hmm. If the government just decided to give 
maybe even 50% of the SMEs in Lagos. Two million naira, stimulus, not a loan, no collateral, no conditions, just basically saying, we know you're going through a lot. We don't want you to lay off your workers. Take this money. That would only cost them not even up to, it's about 23, 23 billion naira. So not even up to half of what they're giving as a loan, that right now it's a black hole. We don't know who can access or, or who is eventually going to be approved for the loan and all sorts of collateral. Why don't you just, why can't we do things differently? It's business unusual right now. And our government has to realize that and do things differently. So we don't want intervention loans. We, we do, it's good, but let's really focus, first of all, stem the, 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 stem the tide of, of pain right now. Is, is my message and, and the sorts of things that they should be doing right now. So I listened to Aki, Aki Umiadeshina, the president of um, the African Development um, um, Bank, and he was saying something about a $10 billion fund for emergency budget support. Do you have any idea about what's going on there and how it can affect? Because he was saying he wants those funds to affect SMEs directly. So do you have any idea of what's going on there? Indeed, um, the African Development Bank is an institution I follow very closely. I worked there for five years in the early part of my career, and I believe they're doing a great job. Not only did they uh, manage to put together $10 billion to support Niger um, African governments, but they've also done some weeks, a week before that, a three, $3 billion um, social bond. And I think it's fantastic. If not, we have to help ourselves. If not our own African institution, who else would, would help us out right now? So that $10 billion is actually split into public sector, like you said, budget support. They'll be able to give the government directly and support. Um, but out of that, about nearly $2 billion of it is to private sector, and that's really where SMEs fall under. Um, I'm also on the Presidential Youth Advisory Group of the African Development Bank, and the jobs department there today just announced a big hackathon um, that will be happening next week for African youths everywhere um, across the, in the diaspora on the continent to put in their ideas on what they believe um, are solutions to the issues we're having now all the issues we're going to have in the future. How can we prepare for life after COVID? Um, the types of jobs and, 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 and institutions and businesses that will be there. And I think that's fantastic because they'll fund the businesses that would um, that would be the best ideas. I'm going to be a mentor for some of those businesses over the 72 hour period. And I really hope that um, something great comes out of it. So the ADB is working. All right, so final um, thoughts. Right. What is your... Um um, advice to small businesses at this point? What are the things that they should start to do right now? Yeah, I think, you know, some of the banks, since my video went out, um, I'm not saying it's because of my video, but I'm sure many of it, some of it was maybe in process, but hopefully the video pushed some of the banks to do some more. F for FCMB, GT Bank, they've all come out with um, different types of interventions to, to reduce, put moratoriums on loan repayments and all. But I would tell SMEs to read the fine print um, some of it is not automatic. Some of it you actually have to reach out to the bank to figure out if you can apply. So please, SMEs, write to your banks, call up your bank um, officers, your loan officers, and speak to them and figure out. SMEs should also be thinking about what the world is going to look like after COVID. Um, I cannot stress this enough. People have to face the fact that some business are go businesses are going to be obsolete. So if you are in a business that really... Um, is very, very high end, and we have a situation that we don't know how long this is going to last. And even when it, it ends, the recovery the, is going to be very slow. People wouldn't be going out to spend or they'll be scared to go out. So we have to think differently. Um, and SMEs should be thinking how they're going to be prepared for the types of jobs that would last over there. And I believe digital transformation is the key there. It's very interesting right now, Uwa and, and team out there, that Many people don't, e don't use te technology tools enough in their businesses, and this is the time. Even the most basic interacting and collaborating with WhatsApp, using Skype, using Zoom, whatever, um, it's very important. Some people don't even use internet banking, and they're really stuck right now. So this is the time to really assess your businesses as an SME and think about what, how you're going to pivot and the kind of business model you're going to, um, that's going to help you survive um, after this pandemic. Thank you so much, Ada. I think we, we need to, yeah. So what you're saying in essence, Ada, 
is that if you have a business now that is not online, then it means you don't have any business. Well, that what that's what, well, she would come to the studio, Ada. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ada. We're hoping that someday we'll, we would have you live on the studio. Hopefully, post-COVID, we'll be able to bring you live to shed more light on it. But thank you so much. Now, we have I another... I want to say on that point. You said? It's okay. I was just going to say that they should just think about using technology to leverage their business. Awesome. Even if you're offline, use technology, logistics to, to help yeah. yourself get out. That's all. So yeah. we hope to bring you to the <laughs> Thank studio you. live one day. Thank you so much, Ada, for joining us. <laughs> All right, so um, Reginald Bassey is a passionate soul with the hope of inspiring the next person to live life fully. He is a public policy consultant, a former chief of staff, and a senior legislative aide in the Nigeria House of Representatives. He will be joining us, or he's here already with us, <laughs> and he's heard a lot of the conversation we've had with um, Ada. So quickly, let's hear your thoughts. We'll take a quick break, then we'll come back again to continue with you. Okay. Quickly on what she said. I mean, look, um, what's happened is an external shock. Nobody could have prepared so well for it. Yes, we do prepare for eventualities such as this, but um, you can never prepare enough. So what will happen is that out of this mess, would, um, new things would arise. And it's the persons who can reinvent themselves quickly that would sort of steal the market. Um, and we'll talk about you know, what, how government should respond, you know, um, probably when we're back. But again, that's um, people who can really respond to these are people who are prepared for these kinds of challenges but and know the tools to deploy for this. So, but before we go on this break, do you see us coming out of this, you know, strong, stronger as an economy? Humans are naturally resilient. Okay. They will find ways. And Nigerians have been known to have such resilience, you know, um, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, type of personality. So I think we will come out pretty strong. We will have a lot of damages to deal with, but um, that's where the government will come in to help buffer that. But again, uh, there are a lot of businesses, if you look at it, that are prepared for the 21st century, prepared for these kinds of scenarios. Prepared um, for this pandemic of this market. Not for the pandemic, the outcome of the pandemic. Um, so, um, okay. we will, I have a lot of questions we will find, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think there are, there are people who are resilient enough to, to go through this. And yeah, let's, awesome. let's, All right. let's be positive about we'll it. We'll be positive. <laughs> so, just stay with us. We'll come back and we'll still have Reginald with us. Please stay. We'll be right back. Okay.